Good morning everybody, you're very welcome back to the Agrimotive Farm Machinery YouTube channel. In this channel we've got something a little bit special again. Uh, so this weekend we're talking about ploughs. So it's time of year, every plough that's available in the country is going to be out working, um, getting the ground prepared for the winter crops for, for, for next season, getting the crops into the ground. Um, so yeah, what do I know about ploughing? Well I probably started ploughing when I was I think 12 years of age was the first time I started ploughing on my own, it was, uh, it was in a John Deere 2850, uh, it was uh, I think a Cavernon tree for a reversible plough, um, yeah it was 1990, it was my uncle's tractor, it was only about a year old and sure I was living the dream. Um, so since that I ploughed with probably just about every make and model of John Deere um, that you can think of. 2850s, all the 50 series, 3650s, 4450s, 4440s, 7810s, 6910s, um, 8430s and you know pretty much uh, anything that you can think of. So um, yeah, so look at those different types of ploughs. So all we're going to talk about in this video is you know the different types of ploughs you can have um, and where they're probably better suited. So we're going to go back to the start maybe with the uh, when the introduction of that with the three point linkage, so we're not dealing with horse ploughs now and stuff, so we're just dealing with ploughs that you're going to still see in action today and then on to the modern stuff. So, the first type of um, plough that you will see around today is the, is the, is the mounted um, conventional plough. So, that's a plough that only ploughs in one direction, it's mounted to the back of a tractor on the three point linkage, so that's the two arms at the bottom and the top link on the back. Um, you will get them from one furrow up to probably six and maybe seven on some of the lighter model ploughs would might have a seven for a uh, mount ply, but it would be a very light plough. Generally, you know, today you'll see a lot of four, f four and five for um, mounted ploughs um, uh, doing a lot of work. Um, probably back in the eighties, seventies, and eighties, you would have seen two and three for ploughs would have been. Would have been fairly common until the tractor started started getting bigger. A lot more people had four wheel drive and stuff like that. So the conventional mounted plow was the first of the plows. So when you look at the plow, you had different types then. So you had ones that had um, the earlier ones had no had no protection. Say when you hit a stone, they might have a spring on the on the bottom of the point, but it wouldn't protect the body. It would just take the shock out of it. Later ones then they might come equipped with a shear bolt. So the shear if it hit a big stone, the shear bolt would uh, would break and the body would kick up. Driver would just get out, fix it back into position, put a new bolt in, tighten it up, and away it goes. Um, as they advanced on, then you get ones with like the convert convert ploughs with a with a, an auto reset where they put a spring into it. So the body would kick back and there'd be a spring to spring it back down into place. This is a big long leaf spring. Some other manufacturers use a, use a coil spring. And then um, some manufacturers then, as the years went on, started using hydraulic reset. And some people like the hydraulic reset. It's not, you know, you can. The good thing about it is you can easily adjust the pressures from the cab. You know, if you're in stony ground or light ground, uh, it just depends. If you're in really really hard ground, you can set the pressure a little bit higher on the go. But it is harder on the plough when it is set when the hydraulic system is set tight on them. Um, so yeah, that's the that's the first one. So moving on from that then. You've got the conventional semi-mounted plough. So that's basically the same type of plough as your mounted, except when it's in work, it's only uh, it's connected by the lower links only, and it's constantly running on the wheel on the back. So even when it comes out of the headlands, uh, you lift up the front arms, and the back land wheel lifts up, and the plough is always rested on the back wheel and on the, the lower link arms on the tractor. So that's why you call it a semi-mounted. It's not fully mounted onto the tractor. The advantages of this are, um, I suppose, it's a lot easier on, on the on the back end of the tractor, say on the headland when you lift it up, there's not so much pressure on the tractor, you're not putting all that weight back down onto the back wheels and through the linkage and through the top link, um, and basically you're just pulling it, dragging it through the ground, and then for road work as well, it's, it's, it's a lot easier on the road, so you don't, you're not getting light on the front, you've got the player running on the on the wheel on the back, so it takes a lot of the, of the weight of it. Um, there's not too many disadvantages, I suppose. On the uh, disadvantages end of things, maybe when you're doing headlands, it can be a little, it can be a little bit more awkward for getting into back into corners and stuff like that because they tend to want to want to go their own way. Um, coming on from that, then the next type, I suppose, we've got the mounted reversible plow. So what we've got then is a plow that's mounted up fully onto the back of a tractor. 
on the three point linkage, lower arms and the top link, but it's reversible. So the player plays one way, you get to the headland and then the flips over and you can play back down um, on the same same furrow that you're after coming back on. So you can start on one end of the field and you can work your way over. Now, the advantages of a reversal play obviously are um, they're a lot quicker. So you're just getting out the head and you're turning straight around and you're coming back down. You're not driving out, skipping over a load of runs to come down another side. And then you don't, at the end of it, you don't have this furrow in the middle of the of the, of the plowing where it meets up. Um, you don't have this big furrow that you have to fill in. So you can literally start at one end of the field and keep working your way over. Um, a reversal plow normally start would normally start off at a three four. You, you'd rarely see anything unless it's a match play or a competition play. You'd rarely see anything less than a three four row a uh, reversal play. So three, four, five, six four, seven four uh, mounted, um, fully mounted reversible plows. Um, Different types of them again, you can get them with shear bolts, you can get them with uh, auto reset, with a leaf or with a coil spring or with uh, hydraulic reset like uh, a Greg Robesson would have a hydraulic reset, Caverne and then have the leaf spring, I think Lemkin would have a coil spring. So there's different, different manufacturers have different ways of um, creating that automatic reset if you hit a stone. Um, or an obstacle in the field. It's just to protect the plow, to protect the chassis, protect the bodies, um, and a, a, it is a must. Um, you would also then have more hydraulics on them. So on the front headstock of the tractor, you have maybe um, a hydraulic uh, front furrow width adjustment. So you can move the width of your front furrow left or right hydraulically from the cab. Some of them might have uh, the older ones or the, the ones with less spec in them would have a turn buckle. Where you get out and you do it manually, you turn it manually, you have it fixed and it's set in that position. Now, the why would you want to adjust your front furrow? Well, if you're putting it onto a different tractor that have a, would have a different wheel width, well then obviously you'll need to adjust your front furrow width so it'll be the same um, the whole way back. So you could be plowing 16 inches, you want to make sure that it's 16 inches on the front. If you put that plow onto a tractor that had a wider wheel width, um, you're going to maybe be taking 18 or 20 inches on the front and 60 in the back so you need to adjust uh, you need to adjust it over um moving on from that then i suppose with the rever with the reversible plow you can also get them then in what's called a uh, vary width now you could you could get some of the you know the conventional plows in vary width as well but it's 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 less common so vary width what does that do so you can adjust the width that the plow is taking say from maybe 12 inches all the way up to 20 inches there's a couple of ways of doing that. One is with, you'd get out and you would adjust them all individually. So you'd take a bolt out, you'd adjust the body of the plow, you'd put the bolt back into a different hole and that would set the body off at a different angle. So you do all the bodies like that and then you adjust another turn buckle on the frame of the plow that would straighten it back up in line, the frame back up in line, the body back up in line. But I suppose the more modern way of doing it is hydraulically. So there's a couple of rams, you do it from the cab very easily. It's part of the turnover procedure through the, the front, the, the manifold on the front. So it'll close the very within, it'll flip the plow, plow over, and then it'll open the back out to its set position. So you would set the position from, from inside in the cab. So you would have uh, a couple of rams then on the on the side of the body, basically where you would have had a turn buckle and it will automatically move the body and then all the, the chassis and then all the bodies will move into alignment, um, as you can see from the pictures here, into alignment with um, with, with the, the truss line of the plough. So everything's pointing in the right direction. Uh, moving on from that then, I suppose to get bigger, I suppose the max you can probably put onto, it, onto a, a, a reversible um, mount of plough. You wouldn't see them too, too many of them over six or seven for a six for it would be one of the max, seven for maybe with some of the lighter ploughs again. So we move on from that then and we go semi-mounted. So that'd be very common these days. So a semi-mounted then would run from six, maybe up to probably in Ireland or anywhere, up to eight. You wouldn't see too many more, uh, many players over eight furrows. So we'd have uh, semi-mounted reversible from six to eight. Again, front furrow adjustment would be on the mall, hydraulically adjusted, um, very width on the mall pretty much. Um, so that again would run constantly on the back wheel. It would never, you'd never have the plow completely lifted up out of the ground. So when you come to the headland, lift up at the front, 
back wheel lifts up takes the plow up out of the ground nice and gradually so you don't you you know you can leave a lovely finish on you give nice clean ins and outs with a with a semi mounted plow then you flip the plow over you pull it basically like a trailer um they can be a lot quicker on the headland if you've got a nice big headland you can do a big loop around and come straight back down without even uh, coming into reverse and most of the time when i was playing with semi to plows uh, that's the way i would have done it i would have done my best to you know get around in one in one uh, in one loop now the tractor that i plowed with uh, most i suppose with a semi to plow was probably my favorite tractor to ever plow with and it would have had a very good turn and circle um now that tractor is pretty famous on youtube so if you wait to the end of the video i'll tell you what tractor that is um uh, yes it is green of course um so yeah the semi mounted uh, and then again on the road what you do is you flip the bodies up and you put the what's in the butterfly position so all the mole birds the power are facing upwards um so it's nice and neat on the road again you pull it like a trailer you have no top link attached um it runs on the back wheel and then it pivots on the front so you just basically pull it around like a trailer and again they're very very easy on the road they're very safe they're nice and narrow whereas with a maybe a six for a mounted plow they can be very wide they can only close in so much they might have a big land wheel on the back as well and they do hang out a lot they they can be quite quite dangerous so to pull a, a semi-mounted reversal plow on the road is 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 you know the dream yeah again very with um a lot of them now can connect to the ISO bus so if you're running through gps they can you know help to keep that keep the forest straight um so there's a lot of technology built into into modern plows the eye plows and that um moving on from that again then you have what's called a wagon plow so a wagon plow is for the bigger plow so you're going from maybe seven eight for up to maybe 14 or 16 for in some cases some cases so you've got a main plow at the front running on two wheels one of the wheels of the plow would be running in the furrow one would be running on land um you'd be pulling seven and then there'd be another section to the plow behind that so you could have another con another reversible plow attached onto the frame of the, of the wagon at the back so you can have up to probably 14 yeah 14 or 16 forests now you wouldn't see them too much too much in ireland i have used a wagon plow it was what, what would you call it four four plus three so it had four at the front three at the back uh seven for a um reversible wagon plow um and i pulled it with a john deere six uh six two ten r yeah no problems with yeah yeah lovely plow uh lovely plow to pull it was a gregor besson um on the headlands especially you don't get that big swing over that you would have um with your with your standard semi-mounted um reversible plow because it's the wagon that nearly turns inside in the chassis so it's nice and neat you don't get a big slap when that when the plow is coming over and especially for hilly ground they're very they're very safe on hilly ground um reversible plows when you're up on the hill if you've got a headland on a slope when you're turning it over you know you could easily flip a plow or flip a tractor with it it can lift the back wheel of the tractor off the ground so you have to be um you have to know what you're at you have to really be be, be careful with what you're doing the wagon players are fantastic they're so neat they're so tidy um again you wouldn't see too many of them in ireland the bigger ones you'd see them in the uk no problem you'd see them obviously on the continent and uh and, and beyond where you have big huge farms pulled by a quad track or whatever so yeah again hydraulic reset you know very wet front for everton built into the gps um uh, into the into your ISO bus or whatever um for for control of the plow uh, standard um on any of those big wagon plows um moving on from that then you can have variations i suppose within those plows so with your wagon plow or with your semi-mounted plow and even with your reversible mounted plow you can have what's called inland so or sorry in furrow so where you're driving with one wheel or sorry two wheels the left or the right hand side running in the furrow of the last run that you've done um, and then you can have what's called on land so on land is where the two wheels are up on the land and um, you're not driving in the furrow now which is better um obviously uh on land is going to be is going to be a lot better um they are more they're more expensive plow because there's a lot more mechanisms to them but if you're working in land on land um you know the tractor sitting 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 square it's sitting at 90 degrees to the ground the tires are making complete uh uh 
match with the ground or they're, they're paired to the ground you're getting your treads everything right down the power is getting right down onto the ground it's not sitting up at an angle um whereas when you're running in in, in furrow um you'd have you know say your left hand side you're you're leaning over and you're only getting say a section of the tire fully down onto the ground um again if you're in furrow you're getting scuffing on the sides of the tires and you could be cutting getting the side of the tire cut with a stone um so on land is a lot a lot better you know for the for the for traction and for um damage to the sidewall of the tires in particular and then when you're when you're in for your you know if you've got a, a, lot, a certain degree of wheel slip now you always want wheel, wheel slip when you're plowing you always want a couple of percentage of wheel slip um so that's to protect the plow you need to have a couple of percent um, but if you're in for you know you're causing smear into the bottom of the furrow wall you're maybe widening it you're tramping some of the stuff that you've plowed already so it's always best to if you can on land so it would suit bigger tractors gps um crawlers your quad tracks your 9rx's the likes of that and then tracks obviously can't go into a fur so you're driving you want to be on land and then the bigger tractors and you see lads with dual wheels then plowing as well so you could have dual wheels on land pulling a big plow um so yeah that's that's pretty much it f you know for plows today um they probably have gone out of um favor with a lot of a lot of farmers over the over the last maybe 15 years people have gone to mintel and i suppose it's kinder to the soil um but you know the plow always has a place you know with the glyphosate ban uh they're talking about uh introducing now you know you could see people returning to the plow to be able to try and control black grass and weeds and stuff like that uh, when you haven't you know when you're relying on glyphosate and you know other other uh, products to try and uh, keep the weeds at bay black grass is a huge issue um the plow you know it leaves a lovely a lovely clean uh, seed bed uh, buries the trash you know not always a great thing you know but um there's always going to be a place for a plow and i think they probably will you know come back a little bit into fashion if the glyphosate ban comes in so yeah that's it that's really it the, all the different types of plows your conventional mounted uh, your conventional semi-mounted, your mounted reversible, your semi-mounted reversible, um, and then your wagon plow, your big wagon plows. Um, so yeah, tractor that I, my most favourite, favourite tractor to plow with was uh, an 8410. So uh, anyone that follows Finnegan's Farm on YouTube, um, I worked for Finnegan's Farm from 2008 to 2019. So I worked with them for 11 years. I probably ploughed with that 8410 for probably six or seven seasons. So I would have done thousands of acres with that tractor. And it was probably, probably the, you know, even compared to modern day machines, just everything about it was just perfect. The lock on the, on the headland, a fantastic lock. It could just get the power down into the ground. It was nice and it was pretty low. But uh, it could get the traction down, you were in a nice position, the cab was nice and big, it was a power shift. Um, and it was just, they're just an American tractor that's built for heavy draft. And it would just pull and pull and pull, a fantastic machine. And you will see it on YouTube a lot, uh, John Bean does be out driving it now and you know he loves it as well. And I'm sure he would echo uh, anything that I say here. Um, I don't know what there must be those over 10,000 hours on it when I stopped driving it a few years ago there must be I suppose 13 or 14 thousand hours on it now if, if even more um, and it will keep going and going and going and going um, so yeah Finnegan's 8 410 that's the my most favorite track that I ever played with out of dozens and dozens that I played with um, and that coupled with a 7 for a semi mounted plow is just a dream to work um, so yeah, that's it for this this uh, this weekend. Uh, it's Friday night now. I'm filming this. It's twelve o'clock at night, but you've seen this on a Sunday morning or whenever you're watching it. Um, so I have a busy weekend ahead, and I'll see you all uh, during the week. Thanks.